Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. And, my gracious duke, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And, my noble lord, this girl hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes, and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung, with fading voice, verses of fading love, and stole the impression of her fantasy. With bracelets of thy hair, rings, gauds, conceits, naps, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevailment in unpardoned youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid, to you her father should be as a god, <coughs> one that compose you of your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but a form of wax within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy hand. So is Lysander. In herself she is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held a worthier. I would my father looked, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I have made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence to plead my thoughts, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius, to die a death or two forever of germ as society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, no other of you examine well your blood, whether if you yield not to your father's choice you can endure the life of the nun, for I austerity and single life, chant Chanting fate's hints to the cold, fruitless moon, thrice blessed to obey that master to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. Lysander, yield thy praise and tithe to my certain right. <laughs> you have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have her yes. Do you marry her father, then? Scornful Lysander, true, he hath my love. And once mine, my love shall render him. And she is by, and all my right of her I do mistake into Demetrius. <laughs> <laughs> I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. With vantage, my bright, er, barely bright as well as Demetrius, which is more than all these boasts can be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should not I then persecute my right? I must confess, I have heard so much. For you, fair Hermia, look you on yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yield you up, which by no means we may extenuate. Demetrius and Aegeus, go along. I must employ you in some business. With duty and desire we follow you. How oh, now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the rose to fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could well attain them from the tempest of my eyes. I leave for aught I can ever hear, can ever read by tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth, but instead was different in life. Oh, cross! Too high to be enthralled to low, or misrapid in respects of years. Oh, spite! Too old to be engaged to young, or stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell! To choose love by another's eyes. Or was a sympathy in choice. War, death, or sickness did lay siege to it. The jaws of darkness do swallow it up, and so quickly, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have been ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. And then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as Thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancy's followers. A good persuasion. Therefore, 
Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a daughter of great revenue, and she hath no heir. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only heir. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee? And to that place that sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us, if thou lovest me, steal forth thy father's house, and in the woods a league without a town there, I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee, by Cupid's strongest foe, by his best arrow with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's snubs, by that which knitted souls and prosperous loves, and by that fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke in number more than ever women spoke. In that same place thou hast pointed me, 